Peace forever and always. <clears throat> it looks like we are having um, looks like we're having technical difficulties. Can you hear me on the other side? I don't my internet is messing up here. Never fails. Can you hear me out there in YouTube land? Now we have a technical difficulties. We might have to postpone. Maybe the internet interference will clear up later on. Uh, this evening, we'll try again. Sorry for the technical difficulties. I think we're gonna have to. We'll try again uh, later on. Can you guys hear me over here on Angel Snub Nub 7? Looks like my internet is having problems. Can't tell here.
Are we on air? Seems like we are. Seems like it's going, the internet going in and out. Seems like we're having technical difficulties. Can you hear me? Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three, Mellow, can you hear me out there? Okay. Okay, I guess we're going to try this. It never fails, it never fails. 
we're having uh, like internet connection problems. How y'all doing out there in YouTube land? All right. <laughs> so you say you can hear me? Pretty, pretty decent, uh, Mello. Give me another thumbs up. All right, well, I guess we're going to do this. We're going to do this. I want to apologize for um, technical difficulties beyond our control. All right. <laughs> In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always and welcome to another edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper or the host of this program, known here on social media, wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty. Mm. Angel Snuffed Up 7, I am your soul brother. Number one. I want to apologize again for any inconvenience that it has caused us. We're having technical difficulties with the, uh, the internet. I would like for you to do me a favor and if it gets so worse we can't continue, please let me know. I don't want to just be talking and for no reason and because the reason why we're here is so that we can talk to each other. Thank you so much. For joining us. I gotta wake up. Gotta get back into the gotta get into the mood again. This technical thing threw me off. Welcome again to what we call Soul Liberation Day 2024. Our theme, our topic for this year is free your mind and the rest will follow. <laughs> I want to dedicate today I want to dedicate this afternoon to those who made it possible that I may stand before you this afternoon and you should give yourself a round of applause because you're not like everybody else. You're different. You have truly come up out of darkness. You have truly come up out of the matrix. You have done so. And because of your power, you helped me to stand to bring a message to the world that needs to be heard. Whether they accept it or reject it, but it needs to be heard. So at least they have a choice and they cannot say they didn't know. I want to send a shout out and dedicate this afternoon to some of my 10 strongest supporters. Those who give me life. Those who help me to stand because if it wasn't for you, I couldn't be as strong as I am today. I've never felt as strong today as I've ever been since 2007. Because of you. I want to send a shout out. To our deacons of reality. Soul brother 85 and. 
Twin Pyramid. My soldiers who truly have had my back throughout these last few years, who've been there. It is an honor and I love you brothers. Man, I want to thank Mellow Cap for being here for me. The Fantastic Four, Mellow Cap, the Dickens of Reality, and Almond Delight, the Fantastic Four. Wow, I got to give you a little extra. Because you're here, whether we're live, you're here, whether it's a replay, you just here. <laughs> I thank you so much. I thank you so much for being with us, for being with me. I send a shout out to our soul brother number two, brother Talib, this afternoon. To brother Sean Davis and Christopher Stephens and Sister Ann of uh, Sister Small Talk. To Fari Smith and Z-Mad and Brother Denzel and uh, I'm not going to forget nobody. Um, Marcus X, Smoke Daddy, Sister Tangy and her family in California. Angela Hines. I did say Razzy Fry. All of you made it possible so that we could stand as strong as we are today. I thank you so much for your support. I've never had this kind of support. Even though it's 10, it's a strong 10. So a strong 10 is much better than a weak 100. And I thank you so much. They reminded me to send a shout out to Phil. I, I know I said Phil. I got him on my list right here. <laughs> I've covered everybody, I believe. So if I do or have missed you, oh, our, our people in London, England, the, the just acting in the resident, they can't join us a lot because of the time difference, but you always say, I want to send a shout out to those on Facebook. Brother Laurel Brown. Send a shout out to Brother Laurel. And there's another brother. Well, I, can't, I should have put his name down. What's his name? Uh, he's on my Facebook. But send I should send out to those who are regulars on my Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For helping me to stand strong. Are you ready? Are we ready to do this? I don't want to hold you long. Right? We just want to do this little talk and get out of here. Are you ready? I'm trying to wake up. The internet threw me off. Threw the groove off. I had asked, and I always ask persons to come here and talk with us because they're smarter than we are. So they say. They're smarter, they're greater, they're better than we are. So I asked them to come here since you're smarter and you're greater and you're wiser and you got it more going on come here and teach us why they don't want to come here and teach us we don't bite sit back in the cup and we let you teach teach me because I'm stupid teach me because I'm dumb Teach me because I'm a savage. I want you to teach me because you know better than us. 
I would listen to your live stream, but you boring, they told me. I would listen to your live stream, but you don't have it going on like that. I'm boring, they say. But they can sit back and listen to some stuff. 4,000, 5,000, 100 years old. That didn't even come from you. It came from some foreigners who are dead. But I'm born. But you're going to listen to some dead people that don't exist reading out of a book that you can't even read without translation. But I'm born. You don't even have a mind of your own. You got to copy somebody that's dead. What does that tell us? Most of these people that you listen to, you never even know them. But I'm bored. I can talk because I've listened to you. I've listened to you for 40 years. I've listened to your redundancy. I might not know the fullness of a lot of these teachings, but I know enough. I've listened to it. You don't know me at all. So when you come to me and you think that you know me, you don't know nothing. And I make you look stupid because you're dumb enough to mess with somebody that you don't know. The best thing you're going to do is be in a chat room because you're not going to come here. All those who ever came here, you are either going to submit to this truth or you're going to humiliate yourself because all these things, that time is over. Because it's boring. It's the end. And what you don't even understand is that even your God says it's time for it to be over. It's over. Soul Liberation Day. It's our day. It comes from us. It comes from our womb. While you foam at the mouth what some foreigner gave you. What some ancient people did that's dead that you don't know nothing about. Well, you do that. You worship the dead because you're spiritual. Because that's what spirituality is about. Worship of the dead. That's what it's about. The deceased. I've never seen somebody in a cemetery do anything for somebody that's alive. And you wonder why you're in the condition that you're in because you ain't no zombies and spooks and dead people and spirits and demons. To come do something. Yes, I'm born. Because nobody likes reality. That's why you drink. That's why you get drunk. Because you can't handle reality. That's why you smoke your weed. Because you can't handle reality. That's why you watch your porn. Because you can't handle reality. A righteous life. Something some of y'all claim. That you strive for. You really don't want that. Because you're boring. You're boring. Trying to be righteous. 
in an environment of sick ass people is boring because the only thing you want to do is get drunk and screw and get high and slander and gossip and murder and rape and pillage and steal. That's exciting. And when you turn on your TV, that entertains you. Rape, murder, stealing, lying. That entertains your righteous ass. We don't do that here. We have to accept reality for what it is. And whatever we can change and have the power to change, we got to change it. You don't even, you're not even trying to change nothing. You think some miracle, something's going to happen. You think somebody's going to change their mind. One day is going to happen. Why you got to keep waiting on suckers? We always talk about things changing in America. We got to wait on the white man to change. What kind of people are you? Then you talk about how equal you are. And you just as good as other people. But you begging for them, you got to wait on them to give you something to change. That don't make no damn sense to me. They don't make any change, no sense to nobody. But I'm born, and you've been doing all this exciting stuff for the last 50 some years within my lifetime. I'm not gonna talk about before, I'm talking about since in, during my lifetime. And you have accomplished nothing. You want to get angry at me because you haven't accomplished nothing. You talk big. Yes, you do. You talk big, but you accomplish and you're accomplishing nothing. And that's the reality of it. You want to get angry at me because I want to win. You apparently you don't want to win. Because anybody that's doing anything, if they see it's not working, they will try to do something different so they can win. I don't care what you used to do. Well, you back in 1930, they did this and they won. Well, you're not winning now. We should be saying we won. Not winning, we won. Past tense. You hoping, you still hoping, you still trying. Soul Liberation Day, what is this day is about? Soul Liberation Day, overcoming obstacles as an individual. We overcome obstacles in our life. And sometimes it's a painful experience. It's a hurtful experience. But the late and great Malcolm X told us in order to get a diamond you have to put coal under extreme pressure. You got to send the coal to hell. And even if it goes to hell, it's still not ready. It's got to be cut. It's got to be formed. It's got to be polished. And that lump of coal turns into a diamond. Some of us, we as a people, we been through the hell. And we ready to be the diamond, but we don't know, we haven't met somebody that can cut and shake and polish us 
so that we'd be like a diamond. We've had some good examples and we've had we've had we've been in some good positions, but nobody, nobody has put us where we need to be. We've been in a position like a, a donkey and you put that carrot in front of the donkey and the donkey starts chasing the carrot but will never get it. It just goes round and round, round and round because somebody has tricked the donkey to do some work putting a carrot in front of his face and the donkey will never get the carrot. This is our experience and this is what we've been through for the last over 50 years and you and I should be sick of it as adults. We should be sick of chasing the damn carrot. So you get angry at me and they're happy when they terminate my channel. They're happy when we have an internet connection problem. You get angry at me. But this is the time. And what it has proven is the people always raised me up. Over 100 channels terminated. Not you. Not you, me. Over 100 channels terminated. The Google itself involved. What the hell should you care about a person with 10 subscribers with 10 views? Why should you have any concern? Why should you care? Why should Google, a billion dollar corporation, go out of its way to mess with somebody with 10 subscribers? Because they know these other platforms, a lot of them will lie to you and tell you that they don't know who I am. Who is that Negro? I've been on YouTube since 2007. In this community, they know me. Many of them know me. I'm not going to say everybody do it. I don't have it like that. But some of these major players, they know who Angel Snuffin' Up 7 is. They don't want you to know. Because once you get to know me, all that stuff that they got going on is over. You gonna stop paying their damn bills for them. And they give you nothing. You paying all these people's bills. Because you all hyped up. And you get nothing. Except you feel good. That don't help us. Feeling good. You do that. We've been doing that for hundreds of years in the church. And at one time, the church was active. In fact, the reality is, the church has done more for us than this, all this black power, black and black economic garbage. Because they tell us a good game, but they can't produce nothing. They can't back it up. They're always trying to claim our people before this black and black stuff. We were doing for stuff. We didn't have a choice. All this stuff they talking about like it's new. We didn't have a choice. We was already doing for ourselves. Even, even with all the oppression, we were accomplishing things. Far greater than the black and black have done. They've done very little. Except bring you the teachings, the beliefs. Because that's all teachings is. 
I believe. We don't need to believe no more. We need to know. You won't get angry at me because you making a claim you can do this and you can do that. And then when I show you, you ain't done it. You get angry at me. You the one making the claim. If I'm making a claim, oh, I'm going to fly today. But you never see me fly. And then people start talking. That nigga don't lie. He talking about he can fly. He ain't doing Whose fault is that? That's my fault. Because I claim I can do this. I claim I can do that. I haven't done anything. That's your fault. Then you'll turn around and talk about what we used to do 5,000 years ago. We used to fly like birds 5,000 years ago. You're a damn liar. We built, we built the pyramids. We'll build them now. We lost the knowledge. So if you lost the knowledge, how the hell did you how did, they, how did you build them to begin with? You lost the knowledge. How? Because you never built no damn pyramids to begin with. We all, we taking the claim, we like to take credit for things we don't have nothing to do with. What you angry at ain't just nothing up something for? You ain't gonna just snub up seven because you want me to be a Muslim. You want me to be a Christian. You want me to be what you are. And you want to be something other than yourself. The number one of the number one things we're supposed to be is an African. So we're Africa. So just for the sake of argument, let us say we African. Just for the sake of argument, we're going to say that we're African. Mother Africa. Mother Africa. But Mama Africa produces different children. Look at your own mother, those of us who have siblings. Your sister is not like you. Your sister, your brother is not like you. Your other siblings, they're not like you. All of you are different. You have the same mother, Mother Africa, same father, I don't know who, who is Father Africa? <laughs> If there's Mother Africa, I would think that there's Father Africa. I guess they wanted the same. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't. Anyway, Mother Africa. So you don't stick. All of you are different. So you have Mother Africa. We supposed to be African. But you don't want us to be who we are. Born in America. And this is all that we know. This is all that we know. You want us to be like we've been living on that continent for the last 500 years. We've been living in the United States of America. I don't want to be them. Even if I claim to be an African, I want to be who I am right here. This is all I know. That is foreign. You might as well try to make, us, make a Chinese out of us. Or an Indian or some other race of people. That's just as form. And then those people, the ironic thing is those people are trying to be like me, trying to come over here where I'm at. What? It makes no sense. And you want me to talk about Mother Africa. But clearly, Mother Africa has failed. Father Africa has failed. They failed to protect. If I'm an African, Mama Africa, Father Africa has failed to protect her children. We over here. So why should I be so happy to see you 
when I don't know you and you allow me to be kidnapped? How would you feel? How many of us feel? You might, you might forgive a parent. You might forgive your father. You might forgive a mother if you was kidnapped and they did very little to get you back. But there's a connection. There's no connection anymore. And you know them. We don't know no Africa. We don't know Africa. We don't know nothing about it. So how the hell you expect me to be so lying to God, so in love with Africa, and they're not doing nothing to make me love them? If I'm an African, where my money? If I'm an African, where my land? Where my goats? Where my sheep? They ain't giving me nothing. Matter of fact, those Africans want to try to get everything they can out of me. They want my American dollar. So I have no, we don't have no allegiance to no Africa. Africa ain't done nothing for us. When a parent abandoned their children, it's not for the children to go begging the parent that abandoned them. It's the parent, those who did the abandoning. You got to come to me and show me, come on back home. They don't do that to us. That's Umar Johnson. That's these pan Africans. That's these silly people running around begging for love, begging for their acceptance. Doing the same thing we was doing in the slave plantation. But now it's Africans. I'm not going to beg them for no love. I'm not going to beg them to be a, for acceptance from them. If they love me, then they need to show that love. Until then, you can kick rocks. You want me to be like you. I don't want to be like you. Because you're still a slave. You're still in the grave. You're still in the matrix. I don't want to be like you. And so, I get a lot of hate. I get death threats. I want you to die. But you in a messed up situation, honey. <laughs> Look. Look you're, in a, you're in a messed up situation. You hate me like that fella did in the color purple. Look at you. You're black. You're ugly. You're built funny. Maybe you can work on somebody railroad. <laughs> Dig a ditch. And I'm like, seal it. Until you do right by me. Everything you touch gonna fail. And so they come for me. All these years, with the death threats and the mockery, I ain't done a damn thing to you, except tell you the real truth. That's all. I ain't done nothing to none of these people. And they done nothing. Everything they do fail. Everything they try fail. As an individual, they make their money because you dumb enough to give them your money. But they don't, can't do nothing for you. They fail. Until you do right by me, everything
everything y'all touch fail. Soul Liberation Day. Soul Liberation Day. It's for you. The core of Soul Liberation Day is not for God, not for the devil, not for George Washington, not for Abraham Lincoln, not for Martin Luther King. It's for you. Outside of your birthday. To honor you for your struggle, our individual struggle, and our ability to survive and overcome obstacles put in our way. It's for you. We as a people have done this. And we don't want to give ourselves credit for overcoming these things. And the struggle continues. In the religious community, I don't know about the spiritual, I don't know about the spiritual community, but in the religious community, all glory goes to God. All credit goes to God. Why? What kind of person, what kind of God want to take everything from you, everything you do goes to them. You don't get nothing. If God was a person, you would look at them, that's not right. What kind of person are you? I question a God. I question the Most High. I question the Creator that gives you no credit. Even, even your employer on the job would give you some credit. Well, let's give a war to so and so. They uh, did this and blah, blah, blah. They employee of the month, employee of the year, blah, blah, blah. Give you credit, but this God don't give nobody no credit. All, all, all praise is due to Allah. You don't, you don't have a mind. Your thoughts, everything you do goes to this invisible or, or person. If it wasn't for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, if it wasn't for Jesus, it wasn't for Jesus. Everything goes. You get no credit. No credit. So me personally, I don't want nothing to do with a God like that. Somebody to take credit for everything. We raise questions here. And I get in trouble because I I interrogate. I get, I get in trouble because I ask questions. My mother told me I used to ask all these questions all the time. Because I want you the reason why you ask questions because you want to know. You should question a person that have a problem with questions. Now, there are those who really don't want to know. They ask questions to be silly. They're not trying to know. They're asking questions to try to find a way to show you that you're wrong so they will be right in their wrong. you just as stupid as I am. Ha happened to me early this morning because I made a statement now you want to try to find something wrong with me. You ain't no different. You're doing the same thing. But if you brought your ass here and wasn't a coward and talked to me face to face, because I'm not going to give you all my attention 
going back and forth with your happy ass. You come here and I will show you I'm not nothing like you. We're not the same. I take the example of the Jesus in the Bible where it said, talks about we should be in the world but not of the world. So I'm not like you. Because I'm here but I'm not like you. Because you're dead and we're alive. You don't even believe your teachings. Because your teaching, it says nothing comes into being without Allah, without God's permission. So if you don't like Angel 7 up 7, then you need to talk to God because clearly I'm here with God's permission. That's your teaching. You said that. And I would even go to say that your God, if your God did exist or if your God do exist, your God is with me more than you. Because I'm striving and we're striving to become an adult. We're not interested in being somebody's sheep because I don't eat grass. And some of y'all smoke grass because you're a damn sheep. So you like grass. And that's good. That's all. Hey, black son, take, take, some, take some of that, bro. <laughs> That's why y'all like the grass Because you're a damn sheep You're a goat The children of God But you Want somebody to call you a man Make up your mind Are you a child or are you a man Because you're going to tell somebody I'm the child Child of God then when they call you boy, I'm a word. Well, you just told me you was a child, a child of God. So I called you a boy. Make up your mind. Are you, are you an adult or are you a child? So if we are adults, then we need to, we need to act like adults and behave and walk and talk like adults. Meaning that if I'm a child of God, that means I grow up into a God. I don't have to pray to God no more. You pay your own bill. You buy your own car. You buy your own house. I don't need nothing from your daddy. I don't need nothing from your mama. When you become an adult. And you want your own. Even if it's a raggedy house. It's my house. Even if it's a raggedy car. It's my car. I'm an adult. This is mine. I don't want nothing from you. Some of y'all suckers don't mind getting stuff from other people because you're a bunch of lazy parasites. When you become an adult, when you become a man, I want mine. I want my own internet. I want my own electric company. I want my own nu nuclear power plant. I want my own. But you're so silly. You in the position to get it because you're a child. You silly. Uh, you can't play with my basketball. Uh-uh. You can't play with my basketball. Well, brother, how we going to... Uh, that's how silly y'all are. Can't play with my basketball. So, all of us, we can't, we can't play the basketball game because you can't play with my basketball. That's my hoop. You, you can't, uh, that's, that's my hoop. Y'all can't play that. Y'all can't play that. Because your children don't listen to Angel something up seven. How do it hurt you to tell people about our vision? How do that hurt you? But that's because we're children. Ever since I've been on 
on social media, YouTube. I have shared all kinds of people's videos. They don't do mine. But see, I'm real. They're not real. I'm not looking for fame. I'm not looking for fortune. I'm not looking for praise. I'm looking for a way out of hell. Share the information so we can get the solution, so we can get the hell out of jail. That's the only thing on my mind. You don't want to get out of jail. You want who gonna get the credit for getting us out of jail? That's all you worried about. I just want to get out of jail. I don't give a damn who get the credit. Cause we're children. And if you really believe that nothing happens without God's permission, the reason why I'm talking to you because I got the permission from your God. You don't like that, do you? Well, you need to talk to God because I'm here by God's permission. And I can't help who I am because your God know what I'm about. Your God know who I am. But the God gave me permission to say what I need to say. The reason why I'm here is because you're a damn failure. And you keep failing. You are an embarrassment to God. You keep making these claims of power. You keep making these claims that you so damn smart and the wisdom and you write all this smart sounding stuff. But it don't produce nothing. And then I come and just say what's obvious. You ain't producing nothing. Get angry at me. Get angry at yourself. Because you want to keep doing the same old thing that don't work over and over again. Soul Liberation Day. A personal struggle Maybe it's by God's permission That I'm here Because at 15 Maybe 16 years old and some of you probably had the same kind of experience. I felt suicidal. Nothing was going right. I had a, I had a bully picking on me. We're poor. I can't experience the things that some of my classmates are experiencing because we're poor on food stamps. And I know I didn't have the best mother in the world. I know I don't have the best parents in the world. I know I didn't have the best relatives in the world. Why the hell? I'm, a, I'm wishing that I was in somebody else's family. I don't want to be here. I will walk across a bridge. And there was no water under the bridge. Railroad tracks and trains. I would walk across the bridge and look down. I said, I could just jump off of here. Why I had to be born poor, black and ugly and built funny. <laughs> I might have jumped off of that. I was afraid of getting hurt. <laughs> so since 
So, so since I was afraid of getting hurt and wanted to die, I said, well, why, why don't I do something to get myself killed? And people do it all the time. Suicide by cop. Put yourself in a, in a situation where you know there's a high probability somebody going to kill you. Step on the, on the wrong Negro's shoe. It's a high probability they're going to kill you. So I turn to crime. Hoping that I would get shot. That didn't work. Real close. Real close. These thoughts of suicide. Because I'm, I'm a young person and I was influenced by the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. I was always involved in the black struggle and I'm looking at my people. They're comfortable being slaves. They don't stand up for themselves. Why I got to be born part of all this? I don't want to be. I don't want to be in here. It's embarrassing being black. Comfortable slaves. I don't want to be here no more. I don't want to be with them. Even to this day, I look at folks and I see how you talk but you ain't real you're not real I hear how far I talk but when the pressure really start coming I see far back off I see Umar Johnson I see the new black parents I see all these folks with their big ass mouth talking all this crap but they know when to back up. Because they're not real with them. They're not real about what they're talking about. They back off. If you're God and you're so smart, you got all this power, then why do they back down? They always back down. Because in this country, you know if you don't back down, you get laid down. Because you ain't in no position to be trying to fight nobody. So why are you running your damn mouth like you tough? You ain't tough. You will go get your gun. You will go get your stick and go fight another black person. Because you know they can't do too much with you. But you're not going to mess with these folks. Those people, Hamas or whatever in Palestine, stupid. You got all your people killed like that. For what? What is the benefit? If I'm going to do that, what is the benefit? So now what is it? 10,000, 12,000 Palestinians dead? What is the benefit? If you're going to do something, what is the Benefit. There's no benefit. So you got 12,000 people. People that you claim, your people that you claim you love. You got 12,000 of your people murdered. For what? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad even used to teach if you can't back it up don't say it you got all these suckers talking tough and won't bust the grape soon as the police come they lay down on the, on the ground and go to jail but you did all this talking like you tough The Pan-Africans are still here. They ain't going to Africa. If Africa is so great, take your ass to Africa. They still here with us. The nation of Islam talks about we need to separate from the white. 
white man. You still here. You making all these claims, talking all this garbage. Do for self. None of them doing for self. No. First of all, your damn leaders taking most of your money so they can live how in the damn hall. You can build a you can build a whole neighborhood block, refurbish the houses, but it's all going to y'all funky leaders so they can live like white people, like Bill Gates, like Donald Trump or whoever. What Malcolm said, you've been bamboozled. Not only by white folks, but you've been bamboozled by your own. Because they don't give a damn about you like that. They really don't care. I couldn't even sleep at night taking thousands and millions of dollars of people's money and I can't produce nothing for you. Couldn't even sleep. They sleep good. And brag about it. My, uh, my followers take real good care of me. And they paying, they paying the white folks rent. You can't even build houses for them. Can't do nothing for them. But it's your fault. So you want to blame me because you're a fool. You want to blame me because your teachings and your beliefs is foolish. You want to blame me because you're a dumbass. That's not my fault. That's your fault because you want to be a dumbass. So I didn't want to be around all of this. I, as a child, a teenager, I want to get out of here. Y'all too damn dumb for me. I, I, can't, I can't take this. But for whatever reason, I grew out of it and began to focus on things that I enjoy writing songs and plays. I start doing that and I said to myself, maybe I could grow up and have a TV show or something. But then religion got me. And see, this is what religion, religion gives you hope. And, that, and that's fine. Religion gave me hope. And the hope that I saw in religious teaching was greater than my own personal ambition. Because the religion said, we're going to separate from the devil. We're going to separate from these evil people. We're going to build our own society, a nation of our own. Yes. That's what I want. That's what I want. So I turned to religion. I turned to the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I turned to those teachings. It, it gave, you, gave you hope. But the hope was dashed because it didn't take no time to begin to see. That's all it was. It was nothing but talk. It was nothing real about it. And I saw the people wasn't changing. They wasn't trying to change. They wasn't trying to be righteous. They was making excuses. Because I'm ready for righteous lifestyle. I never was a drunk. I never was a whoremonger. I never was a gangbang. I never was all these things. I've always tried to live a, what they call a righteous type lifestyle. So I'm ready, but I'm joining these people. They're not ready. Sleeping, sleeping around, gossiping, selfish, materialistic. 
I'm like, but that's not the teaching. And the great leader, he's not sharing nothing with the flock because he wants to live his high life. I'm like, these folks don't give a damn about me. These folks don't give a damn. It's a, it's a show. It's a front. And that's what they don't like about me. Because I know what you are. You're not real. It's a show. It's a front. So it was a, it's a hurtful thing. Because that what was giving me hope Start making me hopeless again. And then I had relatives that was in this belief system. I'm a teenager. Never had a real job. And I want to stay with them to do the work. They told me I couldn't stay. But if I want to stay, We can take you to the homeless shelter. These are my people in my faith. These are my biological relatives and they telling me I need to go to a homeless shelter. You think that's not, that's a hurtful thing. But they're going to tell me about God and love and black people supposed to love each other and all this nonsense. You're going to take your blood relatives. You know me since I was a baby. And you're going to tell me where the nearest homeless shelter is. Then you're going to tell me about praise Allah and all this. I don't want to hear that stuff no more. I don't want to hear it. I forgave them and I still tried to work with it. But I, began, I kept seeing stuff. Oh, well, here come the excuses, y'all. Uh, duh. Ain't nobody perfect. Uh, we all got to work on each other. How long is it going to take you? 20 years? 30 years, 100 years. Things take time, brother. Things take, how much time do you need? And there's nothing wrong with time. But it has to be reasonable. It has to be reasonable, people. If you order a pizza and it's five, 10 minutes later, that's reasonable. You say, okay, you know, it's 15 minutes later or whatever. Eh, reasonable. An hour, two hours later. You're not going to tolerate that. But they want us to talk about Jesus. Well, you already been waiting on Jesus 2,000 years. Now they want you to wait on Jesus 2,000 more years. All of us will be dead. Wait on the mother plane. All of us will be dead. Because wait, we don't. Y'all the most patient. Y'all patient with that stuff. But you're not patient with, with, with each other the way you're you're patient with waiting on Jesus, waiting on the mother plane, waiting for whatever dead person that y'all love. It's not looking good for me in this life. I try to go back to church. That's too weak. Just out here floating around. Try to do something. Nothing work. And then when I thought things was going to work. I get caught up in the criminal justice system. 
and those of you who have been listening to this platform, those of you who bought my autobiography, it's on Amazon, and I reduced the price in the grip of monsters on Amazon. You've heard my story of how I got caught up in the criminal justice system. And so I turned suicidal again because these people are talking about we can hold you the rest of your life. Many of y'all go nuts over a traffic ticket and you have to stay in jail for a few hours. Can you imagine being locked up for 10 years? Treated like an animal, worse than an animal. You locked up with, you locked up with rapists and pedophiles and murderers. Locked up for 10 years. Never had a, a decent night's sleep for 10 years because you got to watch your back because while you're sleeping, somebody might attack you with a bottle or a, a, a screwdriver or something. And they're telling you every day, you better confess to your crime. You better admit to your mental illness. Otherwise, we're going to hold you the rest of your life. How many days did I sit in my room looking out the window with tears in my eyes? And I cried out to Allah because I believed in Allah at the time. Why is this happening to me? Some of you probably been through the same thing. You try to be a good person in your life. And some idiot, you all somebody always messing with you. I don't bother people. I've never bothered nobody. And some sucker always messing with you. I'm in the criminal justice system. I'm not a murderer. I'm not a criminal. I'm not mentally ill. I was trying to write songs, trying to get a career in the mental hospital. And then here come the religious folks. That's what happened to you. When you turn your back on God. <laughs> that will happen to you. When you turn your, your back on God. <laughs> That's what they said. Turn your back on Jesus. So now God got you suffering. I began to say to myself, before I stay here the rest of my life, I need to take my life. I can't do that. And during this time, all these black folks talk up. I've heard all my life, oh, love the black people and black people love. I've tried to help my own people since I was a little boy. None of them tried to help me. The religious ones, well, that's what happened to you when God, when you turned your back on God, I went to the black yellow pages. None of them respond to me. Wouldn't even reply. There's an 
organization called the Citizens Commission on Human Rights. It's a subsidiary of the Church of Scientology. White people. The only ones that tried to help me was the white people. Well, it was the white people that put you. It was a Negro that caused the whole thing. And then years later, he turns around and murdered his whole family. But nobody can see it. But I'm the, I'm the killer. I'm the dangerous one. And since I've been released, don't even have a traffic ticket. But I'm the dangerous one. I didn't even have a traffic ticket when they locked me up. But I'm the dangerous one. So you don't tell me about God. I'm asking God, why are you I'm going through all this crap? What the hell did I do? And Allah ain't doing a damn thing for me. All the bean pies I sold. All the cakes that I sold, newspaper. So don't tell me how I should feel about whatever. And it's your fault. Because you're liars. And many of you going to find out on your own. They don't give a damn about you. In no church, in no mosque, in no synagogue. They don't give a damn about you. There's only a few real believers in their religious ideas. This is a few. And they probably have small churches, small temples or whatever. But these big ones, them, though these mega churches and these big shops, they don't give a damn about you. They trying to live good. They trying to have their heaven on earth. And the sad thing about it, they don't want me to talk about the fact that black people did nothing for me. He said white people helped him come back. That's who it was. Where was you at? Where are you now? We went back and forth on this platform with a bunch of idiots. None of them was white. None of them was Caucasian. All black. In, in their feelings. Because they can't handle the reality of things. Because they can't, they can't accept accountability and responsibility for what they do. So they want to come out here and lie and spread the lie and hope you believe that lie. Nobody did nothing to them. If you don't like somebody, go on about your business. You thought that you're going to use somebody. And there's no consequence. That's what you thought. I was so desperate. I called out for Lucifer. I called out for the devil. And he didn't show up either. I'm like, ain't this a plug? So what am I supposed to do with the devil? Not going, the devil don't show up either. You in this world and you try to do right with or without religion. You just try to be a good person and every time you turn around something bad, some idiot, something happened to you. I'm like, what the hell is all this? What's going on? Never had real friends in my life. Still in my comic books, lying on me. I'm like, what the hell is up with this? These are my friends. I hate to see my enemies. Just want to use folks. And the sad thing about it is, I don't have nothing. I don't have nothing. You're trying to use somebody that don't have nothing. 
But it don't make no difference. These parasites don't care. Anything they can get their hands on. These leeches. Then they turn around and brag how they stole the nothing that I had. Soul liberation then is looking, it's looking bad. Is there a way that you can get out of this? It, it keeps getting worse. And then because I got this insanity garbage on me. As you know, they don't want to hire you for jobs because you crazy. You got that crazy background garbage on you. Well, sir, I'm looking at your records here and um, seems like you was in, in the crazy house for 10 years. My gosh, <laughs> that's a long time, fella. <laughs> um, let's say this. Uh, don't call us. We'll call you. Have a nice day. And when you don't have no money, when you don't have nothing going for you, See, when you're down like that, and people ride with you when you're down, that's when you know who with you. You got your family members don't want to help you. They got plenty. And they would rather help strangers they are rather help strangers. They'll call me a bug because I don't have no job, but won't call the man they sleeping with who don't have no damn job. Don't call them a bug. Something's got to break. And so I thought I got a break. A cousin or somebody supposed to be related to me. I knew that my savior was not God. I knew my savior was getting back on a diesel truck where I can make real money. Where I can get myself up out of this slump. And so my cousin, some relative, I don't know how he related, related to me, that really wasn't fully explained. But I'm saying, wow, we can help each other. I'll drive your truck and help you build your trucking company. Matter of fact, we can, we can make this trucking company, it can be, become, maybe it might become something big. He's too interested in buying whores. He has a wife, but he's too busy buying whores and giving his money away to loose women and trying to make me drive illegal so he, so he can get make all the money he can so he can buy all these, keep all these loose women and he's married with children. I knew I had to get away from that. He ripped me off for my last check. So I got all these people stealing from me. I can't get up. I'm like, damn. You just stayed stuck. Many of you you have stories. I hope that you have it. I hope yours been better than mine. I hope you've been better than, than mine. 
Because it makes you suicidal. Because I was like the Jesus on the cross. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? But things start shaping up. Found a decent job. Start driving. Start paying those bills. Start doing my thing. Boom, boom, boom. The God that I prayed for was a machine. And I got to do the work. But I knew if I did the work, it'll answer my prayers. Because I need to get out of this. I need to get out of this slump. And I couldn't fall no further. I'm already down. The only way I can do now is go up. And that's what I've done. Go up. Like the phoenix. You rise up out of the ashes. 100 channels terminated. People stealing from me. Lying and cheating. Ten years. Bullying. Overcoming all of it. It's not over. <laughs> so. I'm in this place. All my bills are paid. $60,000 in debt. Took me 13 years. I paid it all off. I'm on the board. I'm on my way up again. And then I lost my mother. In February of 2020. She wasn't the greatest like many people. She had her faults. Nobody is perfect. But, what, but when we're going through things. We, we're angry and we get upset or whatever. But sometimes. We don't really understand until that person is gone. So I lose my mother in February of 2020. And then I start having problems. I was having problems with nausea. And we thought that it was constipation. And it turned out to be Cancer. April, April or May of 2020. And I, I looked at that because the realities took on earth, I have grown to be able to accept things for what they are. So I'm not going to cry about it. May he rest in peace. The brother that played the Black Panther. What was his name? Uh, Chadwick Boseman, I believe. May that brother rest in peace. We heard the brother had cancer. And in less than a month or so, he was gone. So when somebody, when we're diagnosed and told that we have cancer, A lot of times, it's like a death sentence. And we get afraid what I'm going to do. 
I just accepted it. I cannot lie to you and tell you that I was ready to die because like Dr. King said, like any man, I wish for a long life. Because life is all we know. But at the same time, I accept that reality. And you will never even know if it was not for some stupid ass people who thought they could bring that and try to hurt me. And then they say, we'd be so glad when he's dead. Because I'm evil. Because I'm low down and dirty. But they can't really explain how I'm low down and dirty when you're spending my money. you spending my money. How the hell am I low down and dirty? You sitting in chairs that I bought. Computers that I bought. Your car riding on tires that I bought. You want me to die to die. And these are the religious folks. The peace lovers. Wishing death on folks. I'm getting ready to wrap this up, y'all. Because we, somebody put in the chat room, is this a church? We going to be, we getting ready to go into the church more because we going to get some testimony before we get out of here. On this soul narration day, we going to testify. Because we briefly told some of the story. We going to testify. If you can testify to your corny, powerless ass God, we can testify. We got some testimony that's better than yours. Oh yeah, come bring it. Our testimony is real while yours is imaginary, speculation, circumstantial. Ours is real. We gonna testify in this mother sucker right now. We gonna testify. Do you know? No, you don't know. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. When people began to learn that I had cancer, diagnosed with cancer, everybody and their mama didn't even know me. Don't listen to my video. They found out in the grapevine. I, I heard you got cancer. Everybody in that mama got the cure. I was getting emails and phone calls from Philadelphia and New York and Michigan. All these health gurus. I can send you these herbs. I, I can sell you these different plants. I, I, got the, I got this salve. I got all kinds of stuff help you with your cancer. And then they go tell me why I got cancer. You probably was eating this and you probably was eating that. Don't tell me why I got cancer. And these doctors in the hospital want to fill me up with some kind of chemicals and radiation. And they want to charge the insurance company hundreds and thousands and thousands of dollars for something that might not work. See, this is the thing. I had good insurance. Everything was 
them doctors was asking the insurance company. My, my insurance company was approving everything. And so they was taking advantage of it. See, the thing about these, these doctors and these hospitals, a lot of times, they don't get paid for certain patients because a lot of patients cannot pay them. So they make up for it with those who can pay the bill. And whether I need it or not, let's try it so they can get paid because I got the insurance. Why are you tripping off of it? Your insurance company going to pay for it. Yeah, but I'm the one got to take the chemotherapy. I'm the one got to take the radiation. I'm the one got to go through all this uh, what they wanted me to do? This stem cell garbage, whatever the hell they wanted me to do. And then you have all these YouTubers, these health gurus calling me. Ain't nobody gonna give me nothing for free. We always talk about holistic medicine and the pharmaceutical companies, whatever, these people are not going to give you no help for free. They're supposed to be your brothers and sisters. I thought that you would help me because we brothers and sisters. No, they want my money just like the white man want my money. Y'all don't understand it. Now, to my knowledge, well, I understand that you got to live or, or, or whatever. I understand that. That's how you make your living. By selling this garbage that you can't prove nobody got healed from. Where are the people that's getting healed from all this holistic whatever stuff? Where are they at? Where are the videos at? Because there's people who have gone under chemotherapy, radiation therapy, whatever. There's people that will tell you they're doing better. I don't see people making videos and show that all this holistic medicine or whatever the hell it is help them. Even so, we're going to testify. We're going to testify right now. You saw me. In the hospital. With all those tubes. Stuck down my throat. Attached to all kinds of machines. You saw me. I never stopped making videos. You tell me what preacher. You tell me what pastor. The honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. Anybody who got sick, who just had surgery in the hospital, I'm still making videos. And ain't no God backing me up. Your God still got your ass laying in the bed. You can't preach because you in pain. I'm in the hospital making videos. Right after surgery. What preacher or pastor can testify to that? I had surgery, major surgery. And you never heard me complain about pain. I never said I was hurting. I told you about the cancer, but I never said, oh, the cancer's hurting me. I can't sleep at night. Oh, the cancer messing me up. You never heard me in pain. When I was in the hospital, they was giving me pain medication for, but they noticed I wasn't in pain. I got, I got my insides cut up, cut open. And I never was in pain. You tell me, but you got these religious folks and you talk about Jesus and your ass is in pain. When you have surgery, when you get hurt, you talk about your pain. I'm not in pain. Explain this to me.
to us. I'm not in pain. So they want, so they wish all this stuff on me. So I'm looking at these greedy doctors. I'm looking at my situation. And all these idiots keep bothering and ringing my phone because you know my phone number is public. And they calling me. And my, my email is public. And they calling me. Uh, get this. I can help you cure your cancer. I said to myself, well, first of all, what is the original medicine? The original medicine is your body's ability to heal itself. Before holistic medicine, before pharmaceutical, all life on this planet, you can heal yourself. So you don't need you don't need that. In this situation, I probably need a little help, so I had the surgery. But I decided I'm not going to do nothing. I'd rather die. Kill me. I even went to y'all God, the Most High, the Creator. I even put it on my Facebook. Kill me. What was it? Soul Liberation Day uh, 2019 or I forgot what, 21 or whatever it was. I was feeling so bad I couldn't even do it on December the 7th. So we went to, it was December the 28th or something like that. Because I was feeling too bad. But I pray to y'all God. If I'm wrong, if what I'm saying and doing is bad for black people, bad for humanity, kill me. I pray to your God. And some of y'all decided to join me by wishing me dead. And I don't mind because of what, if the reality's temple on earth is detrimental, if the reality, reality's temple on earth is no good for us as a people, kill me, stop, make me shut up. Your God decided for me to live. Because I asked your God. And you ask your God, kill him. And then I decided I'm not going to do no treatment. I'm not going to do no chemotherapy. I'm not going to do any radiation. I'm not going to do no holistic medicine. Kill me. Do it, punk. We testify. And our testimony is real. Nobody got a testimony greater. Because the cancer is still in my blood. It's still there. And the doctors don't understand why I'm still alive, why I'm not sick. And the holistic people and all of y'all out there, how the hell is this guy still alive because the power of your God Back me up. That's why I'm still alive. Because you have failed your God. That's the why. You wanted me dead. So no chemotherapy. No radiation. No holistic medicine. No Dr. 
save me. No Dr. Leo or Africa. No nothing. Four years, no treatment. They don't understand why is this guy still alive? How is it possible? Because I turned to nature. And nature, the body can heal itself. I turned to myself. I'm alive because not that I really want to be here. It ain't nothing exciting. But I'm here due to the mercy of your God. Giving you a second chance. Giving you another opportunity to do right. Because until you do right by me, everything you do going to fail. You have no better testimony. I'm alive because of mercy. Like some of y'all parents, you know you should be getting the ass whooping. But sometimes our parents have mercy on us. Boy, don't 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 do that again. Now nah, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you slide, okay? Okay? Cause that, that that was that that was my my chicken breast. I was saving that for me when I got off work. Now you know damn well you should have been messing with that chicken breast. So I'm gonna let, let you slide, <laughs> cause you know this belt. I, I'm not tempted you, but I'm gonna let you slide. Mercy. I'm the final call. I'm your mercy. Until you do right by me. Because when you do right by me, you're doing right by your God. Because I want us. I don't want your money. I don't want your booty. I want you to be a winner. This is your last chance. And you think, you always talk about signs from God. What is a better sign? You explain to me. Next year, it will be four years, no treatment, no holistic medicine, no nothing. And I can stand. Somebody told me, they saw me walking on a cane. Which if I need a cane, I would tell you I need a cane. No, no, no big deal, I, I need a cane. They told me I was in the video. That video that I made, I don't owe black people nothing. That was an umbrella. That was an umbrella. I was not a cane. But they saw me walking with a cane. I don't, apparently, I've been standing here all this time. I don't need a cane. But I don't need your God. I don't need no power, no spiritual power from nowhere. It all come from me. I get all the credit. Ain't no foreigner, no God, no spiritual, no demon. Nobody gets nothing here. And the cancer is still here. But I can walk. See, I can walk. I can even run. I can even run. I can even get out here. I can even get out here and boogie. Woo! Uh, 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 da -da. I can do all that. With no help from y'all spiritual realm, no help from none of y'all gods, no help from the Creator, the Most High, no help. Wow. Who can testify? Who can testify greater? And we don't have to speculate. You don't have to imagine. You don't have to science up. This is what has happened for real. Right in front of your eyes. And I'm saying because of your God. Because nothing happens without God's approval. And God sent you this testimony, this miracle in living color, and you still don't believe. You still don't believe that other stuff. And ours is real. I'm the 
example. The the one of your the, the Christ that come from up out of the grave, right in front of your eyes. I want to say this in our conclusion. <clears throat> See, this is me. My personal story. But this is us. You let others take your power away from you. And you begin to depend on that which is outside of yourself. And that's a mistake. Because you think they better. You think they smarter. You think they you think the ancestors is greater and smarter. And they're dead. It's over. This is our time. If you want heaven, you gotta go out here and get it for yourself. Your scriptures say the kingdom of heaven is in you. Not on the moon. Not in the spiritual realm. It says the kingdom of heaven is in you. And you build it with your hands. You vision, you have a vision with your mind. Just like the lesson that Dorothy learned in the Wizard of Oz. In the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy was trying to go home and she went to see the wizard, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. And the Wizard of Oz turned out to be fake. I'm gonna say that again. The Wizard of Oz turned out to be fake. Didn't have no damn power. Don't you understand that these gods and these spirits and spook stuff that y'all believe in, it has no power. It's fake. And then Dorothy began to learn from Glinda the good witch, I believe, she was Glinda's the good witch. She told Dorothy, you went through all this and you had the power to go home. You had the power to go to heaven all the time. You just had to click your shoes. The kingdom of heaven. You want to go home. It's in you. It's in us. One of the titles that we are, we are obsessed with, everybody trying to be Jesus. Everybody want to be the Christ. There's a lecture by Pastor Ray Higgins and he, he broke it down, but see, Christ is nothing but a title. It's not a person. It's a title. And it means the anointed one. Your mistake is you think it's some individual. One person. The anointed one is yourself. You're, we're the anointed one. When I talk from this platform, it's us. It's not just about me. I'm talking about what we can do. Because there's nothing special about me. But put us together, we are the anointed. We are the Christ. A people born of a virgin. We have no mother. There is no mother Africa. We have no father. There is no father Africa. We have nobody. We just come from out of nothing. Like a virgin. 
a powerless people. We are the anointed one. We can be because it's nothing to brag about. It's just who we are. Because of our circumstance, who we are, we are in a position to click our heels and guide all of humanity back to where we need to be and create the heaven on earth and bring into existence the hereafter that the Quran talks about. But we have to have the right state of mind. You don't have the right state of mind. You, your mind is clogged up with all this stuff. You need to unclog it. Until you do right by me, everything you do will fail. I guarantee it. These people make mockery of our vision called Operation X's Mississippi campaign of which we introduced in 2018 you laugh and you giggle <laughs> that's a pipe dream that, that don't work blah, blah, blah. what have they done? what are they doing? nothing And they're not going to be able to do nothing. You don't even believe in your God because if you believe in your God, then you can see that this, what we call reality is temple on earth, internet ministry, you can see that this also is the handiwork of God. This is the manifestation of your spirit in the realm. But you don't understand. We stood here and testified in real time. Doctors, doctors can testify. You saw it in real time. And you still reject. There's no imagination here. This is, not, this is not a story from 2,000 years ago. You don't have to wait for a miracle. I'm the walking miracle. How can I have cancer and death is still running through my veins? How can I have cancer and I'm talking to you? I can probably run and walk better than a lot of you right now. But that's not a, that's not a miracle. No God is involved. No spirit, no spook, no ancestors, none of that. Nobody can explain it. How? How are you doing that? And I would tell you, it's mercy. I'm allowed to live because I'm mercy. You will not be successful until you understand this is the way to go. You need to change your mindset. All this stuff. Free your mind and the rest will follow. Free your mind. Free yourself from laziness, cowardliness. Free your mind from all this stuff and all these things. And you concentrate on the thing. What is the thing? I want to get out of this situation once and for all. When you do that, the rest will follow. You don't understand that the Mississippi campaign will open doors 
You can't even imagine. It would bring you respect all over the world. You can't even imagine. There was a song by Minister Farrakhan. A white man's heaven is a black man's hell. And in the, the lyrics of the song, I'm going to paraphrase because I forgot exactly how it went. But he talks about the whole world is waiting on you to see what the so-called Negro is going to do. So my friend, it's easy to tell white man heaven is a black man's hell. Waiting on you. Because you qualify. They don't. You want to chase up behind them. They waiting on you. They need you. But you don't understand yourself. You don't understand the fact that you are the Christ. You are the Christ. Not an individual. We are the Christ. When you understand who you are and you're not an African and you're not this Muslim, you're not a Hebrew, you're not you got to understand who you are. You got to understand where you come from. Just like I stand here. I am the reality of temple on earth. There were certain things that made me what I am today. And I was made because what I bring, you need it. We need this. So I'm going to let you go through hell. I'm going to let you go through hell. I'm going to let you suffer. Because I'm going to make something. I behold, I make all things new. Born of a virgin. That's who we are. You're the Christ. Stand up, foundation of black Americans. Stand up, soul brothers and sisters. Stand up, freemen. Understand who you are. Stop trying to be them. Them had their chance in the sun. And they failed. They made things worse. And we can fix it. Where they messed up. Like Elijah Muhammad said, take it or let it alone. I would suggest and advise that you take it. We got to come into a new mindset. I exist because your God, the Most High, the Creator, the spiritual realm, put me into existence for you. But you don't believe that, do you? Because you really don't believe your scriptures for real anyway. You just regurgitate and just copy. You really don't believe. And some of you know and you can hear the voice of God coming through me. You can feel it. You might not really understand but you can feel something here is happening. But you're too loyal to that baloney. Why, why wouldn't you want to gravitate towards that which love you for real? And the power and the manifestation of things come from you. You don't need their books no more. You don't need their Bible. You don't need the Quran. You don't need their stuff. You come here born with your own stuff. When we are born, I'm going to say this and we're going to get out of here. When we're born, we come with our own. You don't need to, you're not born and you need stuff from somebody else. You're born with your own heart, your own lungs, your own brain, with your own stuff. Here you are as, a, as an adult and you feel you need stuff from somebody else. Who ain't even related to you. You can't even speak that language. Dead people from 2,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago. This is 2023. 
A dead person can't tell me nothing. We override everything. Living people dig up graves. I'm a grave digger. And these people trying to take you, put you back in the grave. We come from Kemet. Ain't nothing there that's dead. That's relics. Keeps you in the grave. Keeps you in the cemetery. Jesus is dead. Muhammad is dead. All, everything that y'all got around and believe in, all of it is non-living. So I'm the Christ. We're the Christ. We're the Jesus. As a people, we're the Jesus. We are the Christ. To bring life and life more abundantly. You just don't know who you are. You really don't know who you are. But it's time. And that's why I'm here. So that you can discover yourself. And take the human being where we need to go. Because if they don't change course, it's over for all of us. Some may go sooner than others, but all of you going to hell or to the grave. As many of you know, that's all hell was. It just meant the grave. Back in ancient times, that's all hell was, the, the grave. So on that note, I guess uh, the uh, internet connection stopped fluctuating. Again, apologize for, for that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, send a shout out to, uh, I see Brother Talib is in the uh, chat room. The mighty, mighty MD20. I saw Black Sign in the chat room. Shout out to them. Um, I thank you so much. Um, I don't know what else to say. I had a pretty good time. Started off a little rocky because of the internet situation, but I feel pretty good about our um, presentation of Reality's Temple on Earth. Presents Soul Liberation Day 2024. Send a shout out to Envo. Wonderful song, free your mind, and the rest will follow. If we only truly understood yourself, you found and base yourself on these other people. Their time is over. This is your time. Understand yourself. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. And uh, until we meet again, it's always an honor. And I appreciate everyone that have uh, participated and watched this uh, presentation. Shout out to all those who are listening in the clouds, uh, enemies and friends, and, and those who will be listening to this broadcast at a later time. I certainly most appreciate it. And uh, I want to leave you in the words of our ancestor, Brother Don Cornelius, always would say as in parting, I wish us love, peace, and soul. And we are Audi 5000. Yes, we are already 5,000. <laughs>